Hey guys, so this week I've been playing The Darkness 2, which if you don't know is a sequel to a game that came out, I think, I don't know, 2008, something like that, maybe 2009, a couple of years back, so not a lot of people remembered it. It was kind of under the radar, a uh, sleeper hit, you know, some people liked it, other people completely ignored it, but it's a game where you're a mafia dude who has crazy awesome tentacle arms, as well as, you know, regular arms. So the whole point is quad wielding, you know, you can shoot two guns, and you also have two tentacle arms. I mean, can you imagine that, having two tentacle arms? I mean, that would be amazing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Darkness 2, sequel, takes in a slightly different direction. Is it better than the original? Do you have to play the original to actually enjoy? Is it just a terrible game? Is it an okay game? Is it a good game? Well, here is my opinion of The Darkness 2. The Darkness 2 takes place two years after the events of the first game. Thankfully, it starts off with this kind of cool cutscene that explains all the essential things that you need to know to continue on with the story. Basically, it tells you that you're Tommy, this Italian thug guy who's a bruiser and worked for the mob, and then on your 21st birthday, you found out you've got demon tentacle arms and stuff. And then some mobsters, like, killed your girlfriend, so you got pissed and you killed all of them, and now you run the mafia. So here we are two years later, Tommy is the head of this mafia crime family and things are going pretty swell for him, except for, you know, his girlfriend being dead. He's kept his evil tentacle arms in check for this long time and everything seems to be going his way until he's out having a nice meal and a bunch of douchebags attack him. Turns out these guys want to take the darkness from you, but in order to do that they had to make sure you have it and now it's out of the box and you can't control it anymore. The gameplay is all about what they call quad wielding, because at any point you can hold a gun and shoot, and you got two hands, so you can hold two guns and go dual wield like you can in a lot of games, but not only do you have two arms to shoot with, you also got two tentacle arms. Your tentacle arms don't, like, actually hold extra guns or anything, although that would be pretty awesome. Each of your tentacle arms has a specific function. The left one can pick up and throw things, so you can, like, grab an enemy, or grab, like, a spear and, like, chuck it at him and impale him, which is awesome. And the right tentacle arm is for slashing at stuff, so you can cut stuff down, you can knock down barriers and all that kind of stuff. The quad wielding system works out really well in the game, though it can take a little time to get used to because the idea of having to control two guns and also two tentacle arms can be kind of like, ah, oh, what am I doing? One of the other big elements is light, because obviously you're possessed by the darkness, which is, you know, feeds off darkness, it's this evil dark force. So because of this, standing in the light is bad for you. If you're in combat and you're in light, then you can't use your tentacle powers and you get it's hard for you to see and you can't heal as much and all that stuff. So not only are you going around shooting and controlling all this stuff, you also have to not be in the light, take out lights, and then in the later stages, the enemies actually bring lights. They use flashbangs or carry big old lights to try and stop you from attacking them. You also get this really awesome imp guy that kind of follows you around uh, independently. He'll attack things and stuff and help you out uh, and you can't control him. Except for the parts where you can control him. A couple of times in the campaign you actually have direct control over the imp. You kind of take over his mind and it's kind of like stealth. You sneak around and like stealthily take out dudes. But in just the regular combat you have no control over him. In terms of the story, I'm kind of on the fence because all the, the mafia stuff, like the Hey, yo, Tony, you get the day, you get the day, it feels really cartoonish to me. But on the other hand, there's this whole aspect where, like, the character is pining for his dead girlfriend and you actually kind of see her walking around sometimes and there's some cool scenarios where he kind of hallucinates about her. And then there's this whole section of the story that's like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest where you, you're Tommy in an insane asylum and they're like, All that stuff, the darkness? No, you're just crazy. This is the real world. And and you kind of have to figure like oh god is he actually crazy besides the campaign there's also a multiplayer mode called vendetta it's a four-player co-op mode where you play one of like tommy's like specialized gang members who have some darkness powers but not like all the darkness powers you're kind of like a you're not full you get like one of his powers like swarm or something and you get like a melee weapon but you don't have crazy tentacle arms or anything and you and three buddies can go online and play different missions like there's assassination missions or also just kind of regular ones like like a bank heist kind of one they're all right they're not overly complicated but they're kind of fun final verdict on the darkness is it's actually pretty good i like it it took a lot longer for me to get into the the quad wheeling stuff than i anticipated because normally after like a mission or two you're really into it but this it it took a while it took like i don't know a third of the game before I really started to get the feel of like bah, 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 tentacle, bah, bah, smash, bah, rip in half, you know, all that stuff that you do in this game. But it, it's it's fun, it works, it's 
really enjoyable. The co-op multiplayer stuff is is interesting because it's it's more of the same, but not. It's a little skewed, so it, it's interesting. So overall, I would say definitely worth a pickup if you're looking for something a little different in your shooters because it's not as pure of a shooter. You know, you're not. It's not Call of Duty or anything, but. It's, it's interesting. It might not be for everyone, but if you kind of like a sort of cartoonish violence and, you know, some interesting gameplay, maybe check this one out.